This is the Retan Alloy 9 Mini PC. Let's see how far we can push it. Hey there, how you doing? I'm TechTweeb, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. I'm a big fan of mini PCs. I'm a big fan of lots of stuff, mostly various snacks and beverages. Handhelds too, of course. I'm a PC gamer at heart. I like building PCs, tinkering with PCs. So you'd think that the idea of a tiny little mini version of a PC that isn't as powerful as a big PC or something that you can build yourself or tinker with and upgrade isn't something that I'd be into. But you'd be wrong as usual. That's the exact reason that I find mini PCs fascinating. I love the idea that, it, that this is an entire computer that you don't have to build yourself. You don't have to tinker. You can buy it on a store shelf or Amazon or steal it from your neighbor's porch and it just you open it up and plug it in and start playing PC games until the cops show up because your neighbor caught you on their ring doorbell. Uh, hypothetically speaking, of course. And I'm not talking about just like easy to run low spec PC games. No, no, no. You're playing the latest and greatest AAA PC games on a device that's no bigger than 27 Oreos. Not nearly as delicious though, to be fair. I've reviewed a whole bunch of these things, and to be honest, I get offered so many of them that I usually just turn them down because most of them are so similar and I don't want to have a thousand videos they are all the same thing. But I was genuinely excited when Retan reached out and offered to send me this because this mini PC was on my radar. I had seen a few reviews about it, including a review by my boy Rob Tech, basically the king of mini PC channels. Makes my mini PC videos look like a pile of garbage, to be honest. And he said that this was the best mini PC that he's ever tested. So I had to say yes to this one and see for myself. And I, and I did. And that's why it's here on my desk. Definitely not because I stole it from my neighbor's porch and denied that it was me on their ring doorbell. And I'm going to try a new format for this mini PC review video to, to mix things up and go back and forth between the fun stuff, which is the games and the boring stuff like the specs and the benchmarks and stuff. So please, after the video, let me know what you think of this new format. I'm curious to know if you like this or if you prefer I do it the old way of, of the boring stuff up front and then all the games at the end. So with that out of the way, let's move on to our first game test, which is Counter-Strike 2. I wanted to test this game first because I feel like esports style games are a great fit for mini PCs in general. I played a decent amount of CSGO, but I've barely touched CS2. And my skills in first person shooters has generally gone way downhill in recent years. These days I do most of my PC gaming from my couch or handhelds, which are not ideal for Counter-Strike to say the least, but I figured since we're going to be doing some PC testing and this is still Steam's most played game, yeah, I should probably at least be playing it. Every every now and then, at least when I do PC game testing. So here I am, failing at CS2. I got a few kills, so that's fine for me. I'm playing at 1080p with the low preset, FSR off, and I got about 150 FPS on average. But overall, heck yeah, this is a great experience. If you have a high refresh rate display and you're into esports style games, considering that CS2 is actually one of the more demanding esports style games, you'll have a great experience playing this kind of stuff on the Alloy 9. Let's take a little break to talk about what we get and the specs. In the box, we get the PC itself, along with a bunch of word papers, of course, and an HDMI cord to add to your HDMI cord collection. The power adapter is a big old brick with a barrel jack connection and it's 120 watts. And we also get some extra rubber feet to replace yours if they get stolen in a mini PC rubber foot robbery. This bad boy is powered by the Ryzen 9 7940HS processor, which is a badass processor for both productivity and gaming, as you'll see. It has integrated Radeon 780M graphics. We have 32 gigabytes of dual channel DDDDR5 sodium RAM clocked at 5600 mega things per second. We also have one terabyte of NVMe internal storage. The M.2 slot is Gen 4, however, the included SSD is only Gen 3. The system is Windows 11 Pro, and we get Wi Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. Moving along to some more gaming with Assassin's Creed Mirage. I really loved Valhalla, but Mirage is kind of like a throwback to the older style of Assassin's Creed games. I'm not that far in yet, only a few hours. This isn't a huge massive open world Assassin's Creed where they try to simulate an entire country. 
which is fine by me. I was ready for a change of pace after the huge open worldness of Valhalla. And I hear Mirage is shorter too, which is what I need right now. It also feels more stealth focused than the newer Assassin's Creed games. This is actually giving me Assassin's Creed Unity vibes in the actual gameplay, which is a good thing because Unity was awesome. This is running at 1080p with the medium preset and balanced FSR and I actually got 72 FPS on average. I should have known it would run well. I'm playing this on my Steam Deck at medium settings and it's actually playing amazing there. It's a perfect kind of game to play on the deck too because it's a controller focused game and also it's just one of those games that looks way better than it should considering how well it runs. Here's hoping that Assassin's Creed Shadows works as well as this one does. Real quick, let's take a quick tour of the Alloy 9. It's a, a square, a, squ a square shape. It's a plastic shell with a dark gray color, matte texture with a debossed retan logo on the top. On the front, we have a power button and two Gen 4 USB-C holes and a headphone microphone speaker hole and one of those tiny BIOS reset holes. I have my Crucial X10 Pro 4 terabyte SSD plugged in, which is where I store my games. And those load super quick on this thing over USB-C Gen 4. Plenty of ventilation on the sides. Around back, we have a heck ton of of IO. There's our power plug hole and two HDMI 2.1 holes, a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet hole, and four USB A holes, all USB 3.2 Gen 2. And underneath, we have more ventilation and some rubber feet. I didn't record a teardown, but if you want to see the guts of this thing, definitely check out Rob Tech's review because he dug deeper than I wanted to. The short version is that it's easy to access everything that you can upgrade, including the SSD and RAM. And time for our next game test, and I know you've all been super eager to see my progress with Elden Ring, as pathetic as it is. Well, I finally got past those bosses, the Crucible Knight and the Mistbegotten Warrior. And then I talked to some guy about getting the Radon Festival going, and he said I needed to wait. And then I was kind of stuck after that. I didn't know how to progress. So I resulted to looking up a guide and holy crap, this game is not forgiving if you lose track of what you should be doing and where you need to go. Because even looking up the info in a guide is a daunting task. I eventually puzzled out that I needed to get to this place on the map uh, to get, get to the next area. So this play session today is just kind of working my way there. There was some new stuff to see along the way. So I kind of took my time and I had a few fun fights and stuff. Uh, nothing too epic, although this walking building was pretty badass. Anyways, I'm running at 1080p with the medium settings, except I turned up the shadows and anti-aliasing to high, and I averaged just 41 FPS. I was expecting more than that, to be honest. This game is capped at 60 FPS, but I'm not even close to that here. I could probably get closer if I lowered some settings, though. This is it's just a weird game in terms of performance. I can never predict what's going to happen with this one. <laughs> Sometimes it just doesn't run well on certain configurations for whatever reason. Definitely not a great game to benchmark hardware with because of that, which is why it's a terrible choice to show in this video. And that that's why I'm terrible at my job. The system we have on here is Windows 11 Pro. There is zero extra stuff installed, no bloatware, no viruses, no bullcrap. The system is quick and snappy, no issues browsing the web or using uh, websites. 4K video playback is no problem, no drop frames, and the BIOS actually has a good amount of options. You can do the normal stuff like security settings. You can toggle a performance mode for the CPU. Mine was set to performance out of the box, but if you bump that down to balance, you might get some quieter fan noises. I didn't test that though because the fan was really quiet even at performance. You can also dig a bit deeper in here to access the ability to overclock the RAM. Uh, that's beyond the scope of this video, but you can tinker around with that if you want, and lots of other stuff in there. It's a, it's a good amount of BIOS settings for a mini PC, I think. Next up on the gameplay test is going to be Dragon Age The Veil Guard, which is a game that I'm having fun with, but I was informed that this is a controversial game. I, I don't know what everyone's mad about, but I think it has something to do with Nev's hat. And you know what? I can get behind that. Hand me my pitchfork. This hat is freaking stupid. But, but I guess writing off an entire game because you don't like an NPC's hat, maybe that's a little extreme. Anyways, I'm having fun with this, but I don't know how I feel about it in the big picture. I'm not loving it so far, but I'm enjoying it. I have played all of the Dragon Age games, and I was excited to see what they do with the story after Inquisition. There is lots to like, though. Uh, good writing and acting so far. I'm enjoying the combat. I like most of the companions, especially Lucanus, but I'm only like eight hours in. We'll see how it shakes out once I meet everyone and do more side quests and see more of the story. I'm playing at 1080p with the low preset and balanced FSR. I ended up getting 52 FPS on average during the heavy action parts. Now, this game isn't a lightweight game. 
I installed this on my Steam Deck and it was barely playable, even at the lowest settings. Even with performance FSR, there were lots of dips below 30 on the deck in busy areas. So I was actually happy with how well it was doing here. Now keep in mind, this is a mini PC we're talking about. It's a gaming mini PC, but it's not a gaming PC. But considering it's handling a brand new AAA game, not an easy to run AAA game either, at 52 FPS and it still looks really great, you can totally play through this game and have a great time on this mini PC. Or if you're angry about Dragon Age because of Nev's hat, maybe you can play something else. I hear good things about Milfy City Final Edition. That, that would probably run well in here. I figured I wouldn't be doing my job as a tech dweeb if I didn't do some benchmarks. Keep in mind, these are all done on the performance profile enabled from the BIOS. Starting off with Cinebench R23, I got a single core score of 1,833 and a multi-core score of 17,150 which is just bonkers to me. I am blown away at this level of performance we're getting from mini PCs, and this is like top of the class. I was getting like 1500 multi-core on my desktop 5800X just a couple of years ago, and that processor cost almost as much as this entire mini PC. What a future we live in. In 3D Mark Time Spy, I got an overall score of 3,421 with a graphics score of 3,051 and a CPU score of 10,970. This score is 5% higher than the average for this chip. So whatever secret sauce Retan is cooking with on the Alloy 9, it's, it's paying off in the numbers. And the SSD benchmark was fine. I got these results, which are good considering the SSD is Gen 3, but my boy Rob Tech tried this PC with a Gen 4 SSD and he got much better sequential reads and writes with that. So if SSD performance is important to you, then it might be worth considering getting an upgrade there. And the final game that we're going to test is Doom Eternal. This is 1080p native with the medium settings and I got an average of 97 FPS by the end of this run. And I know Doom Eternal is a bit long in the tooth at this point. It, it's a bit of an older game as far as games go and it's not cutting edge and it's really well optimized and it runs well on all sorts of machines, including this one. This is incredible performance from a mini PC. But to be honest, the real reason that I wanted to play this today was that I was really, really sick of being stuck at this one part of the game. Because every time I fire this game up to play when I'm benchmarking something, I usually end up dying in this area that I've been stuck on for ages. It's, it's in the Doom Hunter base and I'm playing on Ultra Nightmare difficulty and I stopped playing at this part, which is pretty late in the game and this freaking arena is filled with so many baddies. Like the game is just throwing everything at you, wave after wave. I just couldn't get past it, usually because I'm just testing games for benchmarks and my heart really isn't in it, I'm not really playing them, usually sometimes I'm playing them with a controller, but I said no more. I'm getting past this freaking part if it takes me hours. It didn't take me hours. After a few warm-up deaths, I finally got into the flow and I, I did it without too much difficulty. A few hairy areas where I forgot to go for my glory kills to top up my health, but I managed and I did it even without resorting to lowering the difficulty. I really wanted to beat the entire game on Ultra Nightmare, so now I'm finally on my way, again. All thanks to the Alloy 9 Mini PC. Thanks, buddy. I am enamored with this mini PC in terms of the performance. On the outside, it's not super interesting. It's just kind of plain looking, which is better than being ugly, but it's not as good as being sexy. But once you get the stuff going on it, it's freaking awesome. It blows away every other mini PC that I've tested in the benchmarks. It plays all my games great, even graphically demanding AAA games. It has all the IO I could want, great BIOS options and great system. And this is one of the quietest and least annoying sounding mini PCs that I've ever heard. It, it's just a delight to have this thing on my desk to use and play with. And this Alloy 9 is by far the most performant mini PC that I've tested so far, which is ki kind of weird because this isn't crazy expensive, even for a mini PC. It's 589 bucks on Amazon. Even cheaper if you go for the 512 gigabyte model, which might be a good choice because you might want to upgrade that SSD anyways. It's going to be weird now that I've had this to be able to recommend anything else, at this price at least. I'll put a link to this where you can buy it on Amazon in the thingamabob below. And of course, if you want to spend less, there are lots of good deals to be had at almost any price point. It, it's just, it's such a crazy market, the mini PC world. If you think there are too many retro handhelds, you should see what's going on with mini PCs. It's nuts, literally a new one every day. 
I, I don't intend on reviewing as many mini PCs as I do handhelds, but you can definitely expect more in the future. So please let me know in the comments, what do you think of this thing? But also, what would you like me to show when I test mini PCs? And also, what do you think of this new video format? going back and forth between the games and the specs and stuff. I really like this, but I want to know what you think. Please let me know. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video, or don't if you didn't. That's it from me. I'm TechMeme. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.